So Sharma ji has made a mention of what is in NAP. And I am supposed to give an overview of NAP, which has already done it so beautifully. Uh, last week I was in Baroda to talk about NAP only. Somebody asked me, a senior teacher asked me, will NAP work, sir? There are so many commissions happened before, so many reports came, not much change has happened. Will NAP work? I told him I love stories, I told a story. There was a great sage doing tapasya in the cave up in the mountains, and few boys in the town thought we should test that man. He is supposed to be a Trikala Jnani, he knows everything. We should go and test him. Four of them went up the mountain. As they went close to the cave entrance, one boy saw a small little insect flying in the air. He just caught it up. He caught the small insect in his hand and walked inside the cave and all four sat there. And one boy asked Swami, this uh, sage, Sir, it seems that you know everything. Even unseeable can be seen by you. Can you tell me what is in my hand? What is in my hand? Guru closed his eyes for a minute and then it's just common sense. You can't have a big thing in the hand, it must be a small insect. He said, you have a small insect in your hand. The boy said, right. Second question is more important. Is it alive or dead? Then the sage thought for a moment, these boys have come to test me. They want to prove me wrong in any case. If I say the insect is alive, you will crush it. If I say it is not alive, you will fright. In any case, I will be proved wrong. The sage was a wise man. He said, whether it is alive or dead is in your hands. <laughs> if you want it to be alive, it will be alive. If you want it to be dead, it will be dead. Same thing with NEP also. If all the teachers, if all the teachers want it to be successful, it will be successful. If you don't want it to be successful, it cannot be successful. If believe me, every policy is wonderful. Lot of thinking has gone behind every policy. But how we implement is important. Ultimately, Professor Sharmaji mentioned nicely at the end, he said, implementation is more important. I want to give you a small summary of it, not much of it. Uh, it talks about the four pillars, most important. Five pillars of this, access, equity, quality, affordability and accountability. These are the five pillars on which the whole NAP is standing. And another most important aim in higher education of the NAP is to increase the gross enrollment ratio to 50% by the time we reach 2035, including the vocational education has to go on. For a country like India, with 1.4 billion people, 50% is not very ambitious. It looks ambitious, but it should be natural. It should happen. At least 50% of our students should be able to go to higher education. And the demands that number of seats to be created in higher education is about 3.5 crores seats are to be created in higher education. Somebody asked me, can you mention in one sentence or one minute the secret of NEP or what is the summary of NEP? I should congratulate the thinkers of NEP. I am happy about four things. If you ask me to boil down the whole NEP into very simple facts, I am proud about it for four reasons. First and most important, it has broken and destroyed the silos that we had made earlier, which are watertight compartment. You are branded as a commerce student, branded as a science student, branded as an art student, and that brand will carry throughout your life. That means everything was knowledge was classified into small silos or bags, watertight compartments. First time, NEP has destroyed all that. There are no silos. And secondly, and most important is, earlier qualification was more important. Today, your passion is more important. You can pursue your passion. If you are passionate about something, you can pursue it, there's no problem. And third and the most important thing I'm proud about is, it is rooted in Indianness. Rooted in Indianness. If you go through the NEP complete document, you see at several places a conscious effort has been made to make the student proud of being an Indian. Instead of saying, oh, yo, India will never improve. No. I am proud to be an Indian. At the end of it, you should be able to say. In fact, normally when we write lesson plans, we always say at the end of the class, say what the student should be able to achieve at the end of the class. 
my question now is if NEP is implemented under the true spirit at the end of the program of a graduation degree or post graduation you should be proud that you are in India that is the contribution of NEP and the last and the most important one is it is holistic growth of the student not one sided growth we have seen people who are mechanical engineers with the MTech degree but cannot repair a scooter of his own and electric engineer cannot set the fuse right in the house that means I have degrees in my hand, but I don't have common sense and uh, skills also. So the whole thing is so holistic now, the growth is holistic. I'll make a simple summary of that. This will be more useful to me to uh, mention. Uh, how this, uh, only one point I would like to mention, so simple. What is it now and what it would be in the NAP? Some bullet forms I'll give you. Till now what was happening is, Institutions only followed the universities and had an advantage also. Something goes wrong, we point a finger at the university. University is like this. <laughs> we were not responsible for everything we are pointing at the university. Please believe me now, institutions would lead. It's, you can't point a finger at anybody. As Sharmaji very rightly mentioned, by 2030 or 35, every college has to become an autonomous college. Then the blame game stops. You can't blame anybody. If the college does well, you are responsible. College does not do well, you are responsible. Therefore, responsibility shifts on to you. The accountability shifts on to you. Very, very important. It was required. It was required. We're taking shelter under somebody's umbrella so far. Now it can't continue for a long time. Earlier, university was the focal point. Everything was going through the university. University was central. Now, colleges will be the central point. Each college will be important now, not the university by itself. As you mentioned very rightly, earlier we had very heavy but loose regulations. We had, uh, I was a part of the chemistry board of the university grants commission. Sir. I always used to ask, why it is called grants commission? Is only a fund distributing agency? Nothing else? No idea of quality at all? Only go there at the end of the year and submit a proposal, get money and you get whatever you deserve. But only money. Who is going to check the quality of the institutions? Then I still remember the Arun Nigvekar walked from Pune to this place to start this institution now. I was the only companion with him at that time. Because he was the one who never knew Bangalore. And I took him around to different colleges. Arun and myself used to sit. In fact, I helped him to get that building of NAC in Rajkumar Road. We sit together. We started racking the NAC systems of UK, Australia, USA, everywhere else and started making formulation. We learned that we have so many roles, but nothing is strict. You can escape any role. That was the condition earlier. Even if you admit more students than you are allowed to admit, then finally you go to the university, get an approval. Okay, this year admissions are approved. Everything was loose. In fact, I remember uh, a few months ago, uh, there was a meeting in Delhi about the traffic problems of Delhi. We have enough in Bangalore. But uh, daily they were discussing seriously. And somebody said, we should make the rules tight, sir. Too much of problems in Delhi. Traffic rules should be tightened up. More rules should be made. And the traffic commissioner was a very silent man, unusually. He sat through the program and finally made a statement. Sir, I have to bring to your kind notice. The number of the traffic rules are the largest in the world. The number of rules are the largest in the world. It's not the question of how many rules we have, but how much of is followed is more important. So therefore, heavy and loose regulations were there, but now they are light, but very tight regulations will come in NEP. Very important further. The next one is, uh, each regulatory body had many functions earlier. As I mentioned earlier, same thing was done by so many bodies. Or one body was doing too many jobs. But now, they have created a body such a way, one function for each body. And we had a rigidly ruled system earlier, very rigidly ruled system. Now flexibility is the mantra. Lot of flexibility has come in now. You can choose subjects of your choice, you can take combinations of your choice, and you want to learn something new at the end, you can drop one subject and take another subject. Ultimately, it depends on how you learn. The present system, you get degree at the end of three years. You can't get the degree earlier or certificate earlier. If you fail in the first year, is incomplete BA, BSc, become. I have seen many of my students, girls in the college, 
they dropped out after second BA, but they remained, they did not complete BA at all. So they don't recognition for the two years effort they had put in. There was no effort, uh, recognition for that. That means you have failed to complete two years, but could not complete the final year, but there was no recognition of that. You still remain BA failed or BA did not complete. But now it is not so. Certification at the end of each year you get a certificate or a diploma or a graduation certificate. You get depending on how many years you complete. This is the most beauty of uh, NEP. Earlier, you had to take sub subjects whether you like it or not. Am I right? Uh, PCM combination, CBs had, or whatever combination you chose. I didn't like mathematics, but I had no option. <coughs> I didn't like physics, but I had no option. Remember, many students in rural areas failed because of English. Am I right? They were extremely good in other subjects, but the English they could not follow. But they could not complete degree because they were not good in English. Is as good as saying, a rabbit is beautiful but cannot climb the tree. But why are you forcing to climb, climb the, the rabbit to climb the tree? Now the system is different. You can choose subjects of your choice. When you take subjects of your choice, they are subjects of your interest. When you do something that you are interested in, you are definitely going to do better. I can tell you, uh, this system is to large extent borrowed from the West, the concept of open combinations. In fact, uh, Richard Feynman, those of you who studied physics would know, one of the greatest uh, minds that we can ever think of, supposed to be more intelligent than Einstein, a gifted orator, his physics lecture series, Feynman lecture series, I think no teacher can do away without it. Feynman's subjects in graduation were, his subjects in graduation, listen to me very carefully, his subjects in graduation were particle physics, American history and western music. Can you imagine a combination like that? But he was a genius. In music, he went to Brazil and learned drum beating and became a national champion of Brazil in drum beating. And he was an extraordinary lock opener. You could open any lock, including the presidential confidential locker. You could open in Washington, D.C. Genius of the heck, but particle physics is a Nobel laureate in physics. You can imagine the genius has no bounds, but we limit it. For the fear of taking English, I don't complete my degree. Since I did not like mathematics, I do not get high scores. But now the choice is with you, creative combinations offered by the colleges. Not only students choose the combinations of their choice, colleges also become creative now in creating new combinations. At least to survive you should offer good combinations, offer good combinations. Now earlier we had to force the students to go to a particular institution, they had no choice. Oh you wanted this combination? I remember when my sister wanted to study mathematics, as we had major and minor subjects at that time. She wanted a mathematics major. She, we moved all the way from Bagalkot to Bangalore, to, to Dharwad. Because Karnataka College was the only one which offered mathematics major. That means we had very limited opportunities of studying in my own place. Many people would not continue also. But now it is not so. Colleges will attract students to different combinations. Now instead of students going to a different forced combination, college used to attract students to a different one. Earlier eligibility for joining a program was pass or fail. This will totally change now. He used a very appropriate word. There is a paradigm shift. It is not a cosmetic change. There is a paradigm shift. What is the paradigm shift now? Pass or fail is not the criteria. The number of credits that you have, what is the credit criteria? I may complete the rest, so supposing there are 24 credits for chemistry or physics or accountancy I am studying. I complete only 12. No problem. You have got the 12 in your ATM. You can encash them later, you can complete the remaining course later on. That means nothing called as a fail or pass. I completed the credits for it. They are in my bag. He called ABC, Academic Bank of Credits. They are with you. That means flexibility is so beautiful. Mobility is a challenge now. Suppose you are studying in Sheshadripuram College and your father gets transferred to some other place in India and you don't know what to do. And I have seen students coming back to Bangalore to appear for the examinations here. And by then the scheme would have changed and they had to take the new paper altogether. Now it is not a problem. Like your ATM, you can put the money in the bank and draw it from any ATM station anywhere in the country. You can study here and study the same subject elsewhere in other college and the credits will be with you and carry forward. The degree will be continued. Earlier the duration was fixed, you had to complete B.Sc. in 3 years, B.A. in 3 years, B.Com. in 3 years, it is not so. This is called multiple exit or multiple entry. This is very common in the U.S. I have seen and I have taught there. 
children drop out of the college. The funding is not done by father. In India, we are very fortunate. Our parents take care of for our education and sometimes belong beyond also. In fact, in one of the programs in uh, Nimhans, uh, the graduation program I attended and somebody asked me, what is graduation program? I told him a very simple sentence. Graduation day means the day your father's money stops. <laughs> but here in India, even the son is married, the father continues to sponsor the whole thing. But it is not so now, not so now. Duration was fixed, now duration can be more. You can try to take diploma at any time and do it further. Now the present system, affiliation is the rule. Affiliation is very critical for a college to start and function. Affiliation is very important. In future, the colleges should become autonomous. They design their own course, design their own content. They can modify, include research also, practical training in that, most important. And then earlier, in present system, providing institution courses through access. People chose the college because of the availability. Supposing I'm studying in Kolar, I go to the neighboring college, the nearest college. Access was more important. Today, because of your aspirations, you can go elsewhere. This is very common in the West or in developed countries. I have seen boys and girls going from one town to another town far away only to study that particular subject. They want to study in that college, in that subject. Today, it is possible with NEP, because depending on your aspirations and interests, you can go from one college to another college. <coughs> Earlier and today, students' career is the focus. 90% marks, 85% marks, oh, you want to go this? All your future programs are dependent on your marks and grades. Career was a focus. Now today, along with career, your passion is a focus. If you want to be an artist, you can be an artist. In fact, you can be a top class artist and you can pursue your career also in that. Earlier, we had limited choice of subjects. Today, students can choose the subjects and the combination that you want. Teacher was the center of teaching that you mentioned beautifully. Earlier, teacher was important. Even today, teacher is important. We don't know how to run a college if the lecturer is not there. Your lack of teachers, we don't know what to do. Perhaps now, take it from me, it becomes a student-centered education and you'll have flipped classrooms, you'll have blended learning, you'll have partly online and partly offline classes. Corona has taught us a beautiful lesson. A terrible lesson, but some good lessons also. Good lesson is that Remember, 2019 December, none of the teachers even heard of Zoom. <laughs> they had not even heard of Zoom. But come April, they started teaching on Zoom. This is a marvelous thing. Even the Prime Minister had forced technology on us, would not have learned it so fast. But Corona did it for us. We learned technology so fast and it is going to be the way now. That means, supposing a teacher is not available, the material will be on the website, you can download and take it with you, a teacher can add additional things later on. This is going to be, blended learning will be the future. And the predominance of the content and delivery was more important, no? Content, you should study this, and this question will come. We have something called as a, what is that? Uh, uh, blueprint of the question paper is there. That means, this chapter will get three marks, this chapter will get 5 marks, so students are very comfortable. I can drop out these 4 chapters, still get 60% marks. That means it's part BA, BSc become, not complete, because you don't read the entire curriculum. Today is not so. Importance in the pedagogy and understanding. How much you remember is not important. How much you understand is more important. Before I close, I'll mention one incident in stock. Many, many years ago, <coughs> not many means, not uh, decades ago, a few years ago, uh, the director of the pre-university education board, he had a lot of respect for me, he said, sir, can you do some training for the toppers of CET, the top 20 in CET? I said, why do you want to do career for course by them? They have already selected their courses. No, sir, some career focus you should do. I can't say no to him, I went there, there were 20 people were there, top 20 and uh, 12 girls and 8 boys and I was shocked. Everybody had got 100 of 100, 100, 100 of 100 in uh, PCMB, all four subjects, 100. Not even one mark less. But still out of curiosity, I wrote down the name of every student and asked which subject is your favorite subject. I got all the information, morning did some session and asked them to come at 2.30 in the afternoon. When they came, I gave them the same question paper that answered two months ago and got 100% marks. And their favorite subject, I gave the same question paper. 
and they answered and we got it valued. Nobody got more than 55% marks. I asked them, why? You got 100%? No, two months ago. They said, sir, two months ago. Who remembers, sir? We forgot. <laughs> then I asked them, have you seen Shole movie? Sir, yes, you have seen Shole movie. You see, if I show you, can you tell me the story? So what about story, sir? We'll tell you what happens next also. <laughs> I said, you watch Shole movie for three hours and you remember it for all times and you studied the subject for two years and don't remember it. Why? The response is very simple. Very, very simple, my friends. Anything that goes to the brain goes to a short-term memory. Anything goes to the heart goes to a long-term memory. If I have to summarize the entire NEP for you in one sentence, NEP's focus is to make you understand rather than by heart. Thank you.